this is uh, my uh, great grandfather who started the baking business in Staten Island, New York in the late 1800s. Uh, and he had four sons and eventually my grandfather, uh, John Zinicola, Giovanni Zinicola, he moved to New Jersey to start his own baking business. Uh, this is one of his sons, Uncle Emilio, and uh, he was uh, very young at the time. I think this picture was taken about 1910. And uh, at one time there were about five Zinicola bakeries because there were so many sons. We had two in New Jersey and three in Staten Island. But uh, t today there's only one left, and that's in Nutley, New Jersey. Uh, Zinicolas were bakers from the old country. Uh, they had uh, bakeries back there in, uh, in Italy, and uh, they always have been, and you know, probably always will be bakers. I don't know anything else they've ever done for baking. The horsetry has been uh, in the family for years. I think every member of the family might have one of these pictures because it's such a great picture. Okay. Uh, Rosario, we, we called him Rosario, his name is Rosso. Uh, he was my neighbor on Burton Place in Nutley. He was actually one of the first building contractors in the town. Funny thing about it, Burton Place was split in half. I lived in Nutley, Rosario lived in Bella. So the property line went right through uh, between our houses. Uh, he was a great guy, had the first actual tractor bulldozer and helped right after the war to build that whole development called the White Oak section in, Nup in, in Belleville which he dug almost all the foundations for it because he had a bulldozer to work and he had a lot of sons and daughters they still live on the top of the hill there in Burton Place uh, not this truck but I'll tell you about a truck later uh, in the 40s and so he had uh, one of the only trucks around and uh, we used to go mushroom picking, and all the Italian guys in the neighborhood used to jump in the truck, and uh, it was a newer truck, of course, and a couple sat in front, and we loaded up the back, and we'd go to Hibernia, up by Denver, with mushroom pick. And all the Italian guys, we loaded the truck with, of course, my family being the bakers, Italian bread, provolone, supersad, uh, pepperoni, all cheeses, olives, who bottled this and who bottled that? And we go up there, it was like a great picnic, and we come home with bushels of mushrooms. And uh, my mother always said to me, I don't know how you guys found your way home, because I guess the boys drank a little, they ate a little, so you know, it was tough. But uh, we had a great time, and I remember going with these guys when I was a kid, mushroom picking in Hibernia. And uh, his sons all went to the business, and there's still, uh, there's no business left up there, but uh, they were builders in, uh, in uh, actually excavators in our town for many, many years. The vacateurs still live on Burton Place and in the neighborhood. Yeah. Kind of like the, the, the hero of Belleville in a way. I mean, he laid the foundation, literally, literally well, laid the foundation. The, he dug the holes for the foundations. Yeah. And uh, right after World War II, they built that development because all the guys were coming home. And they had to put houses up and all. And uh, he was instrumental in doing a lot of the excavating over there. So, uh, yeah, he has a, he had quite a reputation in town. And, uh, of course, he had a big family, like most Italian families, 10, 11 kids at that time with nothing. Wow. And uh, he had a big family, he had a lot of sons and daughters. Of course, I went to school with their kids, you know, but uh, uh, there's still some living up on certain places. So this is a neighborhood picture. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in my neighborhood, the Italians came. And they bought a place of property and they had a house and they built a house. But they always bought the lot next door. They somehow managed to buy the lot next door because they always wanted a big garden. So if you go up King Street now in Hancock's Avenue, you can see the original house, but where the garden used to be, you see the family's house, like a son or a daughter. They always, when they came back from the war, they built houses in the gardens. What they had were called gardens and that was it. In fact, all up and down King Street and Hancock's, everybody I go by, oh, that's the Pandolfi house, that's the kids' garden. That's the Durandal house, that's the kids' garden. Another Durandal lives there. The same thing on King Street. The Gashones had a house, kids came home and they built in the garden. The Donadias had a house, the kids came home and they built in the garden. The DeRosas had a house, the kids came home and they built in the garden. 
The Larich had a house, the kids came home, they built them a garden. The Castronovas had a house, the kids came home, built them a garden. So it was everybody who was coming home, they looked for places to live. The gardens went, the kids built their houses in. But they always had backyard gardens, but not big gardens like we used to have years ago. A whole lot, 50 by 100 or something. It was all garden. I never ate anything except what my father grew or raised. You know, it was, it was unusual for us to get out and get something. Uh, my father had chickens, rabbits. We had a goat. He had a big garden. He grew everything. You know, my mother canned all the bottled all the stuff. We didn't can any bottles back then. And if he picked mushrooms, we had mushrooms all year. He made his own wine. So everything we had when we were kids were from the garden or the yard. It was very interesting. I loved it. I tell you, I wish my kids could experience the life I had as a boy growing up. Just came out of depressions. I was born in 36. My brother was born in 32. So actually, we were born during the depression, but we we're coming out of the depression. Of course, we were raised during World War II. And, you know, World War II came in 41, and so uh, a lot of them went to service. Well, it was nothing to walk in my neighborhood and see these flags that were an emblem of how many kids you had in the service. To see these flags with four stars on them, some had five, some had three. That represented how many kids they had serving in the armed forces. And uh, it was nothing. Every house had about two or three stars on their flag, and every house had a flag. So everybody who lived in my neighborhood had people in the service. I got to tell you a funny story. When they came home from the service, my grandmother was educated both in English and Italian. And she used to read the letters for the people that they got from Italy. So when they came home from the service, we had the bakery. So what happens is the Italian woman wanted to have a party for their kids coming home from the service. So they would go out and get the beer and the soda and stuff. And then I see the woman come walking down the street with a bushel. And in the bushel would be all these jars of tomatoes and stuff. And they come to my grandmother's house to the bakery. And for the party, my grandmother used to bake the pizzas, 10, 15 big sheet pizzas for the parties. And every serviceman I can remember, when they came home, that's what they got. They got a pizza party. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, it, was a, it was a thing that I remember vividly. The old woman coming up the street, carrying her bushel with maybe eight, ten quarts of tomatoes in it, and waiting for the pizza party. And we had great times at those parties. This is a good homemade style. Homemade style. Oh, wow. Grandmade. <laughs> Only two things we had, regular pizza, we call it pizza for my daughter at that time, which is a tomato pie. Mm -hmm. And she put sometimes sardines, uh, not sardines, anchovies on them, and that was it. And you know what? That pizza tastes as good fresh as it did the next morning, and I ate much of it for breakfast sometimes. <laughs>